right, well, uh, welcome, Amanda. Um, we, I'm Chantel Haynes. Um, I work with Amanda at Clarity. We are so thankful to be here. Um, just what Jessica was speaking earlier, this is exactly where we are meant to be here, and we are meant to be here today. So thank you for taking a risk on yourself so we could take a risk on ourselves. So again, Amanda Stillwell, um, so founder of Clarity Financial Solutions. I'm gonna repeat some things, but this is my girl and I have to introduce her. So <laughs> Series 65 license fiduciary, insurance broker, national social security advisor, registered social security analyst, mom of three, and wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, all the things. Um, so Amanda, just tell us how you got into financial services. Well, just like it was mentioned, um, Brittany mentioned, I started my career in home health and hospice. Not as a clinician, but in, in development. For some reason, I was picked to oftentimes go into family situations and talk through, oh no, what do we do, right? So there was some type of hospitalization, an unforeseen hospitalization, client would move to skilled nursing and now has to go home but can't stay by themselves safely. And that impacts us women, right, as caregivers and also often adult children, um, women who leave the workforce, and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Yeah. But I saw this just chasm, lack of education around fundamental financial topics that happen to everybody, but you don't really know about them until they happen, right? So you, the education piece, and so I just, I felt like I needed to move, take a risk from um, just putting Band-Aids and preventing these fires, right? To, from putting them out to truly preventing them from happening. So that's how I got into financial services. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely didn't study finance. Um, I, I have studied a lot of it now. <laughs> but um, I love that I get to serve and educate and walk alongside families. Awesome. Okay, so the title of this talk is From Putting Out Financial Fires to Preventing Them. Tell us more about the meaning of this title. Yeah, so just like I was saying, when we had conversations, um, you know, Brother Joe flies in from work with these families, Uncle, Uncle Joe, Sister Sally, and we're trying to navigate how are we going to do this? How are we going to care for mom or dad? sister brother sometimes. Um, they can't go home, but it's time to go home. So the, the nursing homes, assisted livings, when you're doing skilled care, they don't just keep you there, right, until you're ready to go. You, there's a discharge date. So I would have to problem solve this, and I would have to bring up the fact that a huge dollar sign comes with home care, yeah. right? So in South Carolina, where I serve, and in Georgia areas, the average is $47,000 to $72,000, depending on how many hours you need, of home care. That's just an aide. That's not a nurse. And that is astounding. So you can quickly see how that would eradicate someone's financial you know, accounts. They're just not what they wanted to spend them on, right? They would rather go to travel right. or spend time with their grandchildren. And then if they couldn't stay home and they needed to move to assisted living, now we're talking about, I mean, sky's the limit on the cost. Is it a la carte, et cetera? But anywhere from 57 to upwards of 80. And these vary state to state. There's some great, at the end of this, I'm gonna send you a QR code and you can scan it and I'm gonna send you some great data and also some tips and suggestions so you know about your state. But um, it's very expensive. And a lot of times these families just assume their mom or dad's medical insurance was gonna pay for their medical needs, right? But that's not what these are. These are just, I can't stay home safely. Yeah, doesn't Medicare pay for that? Yeah, we hear that all the time. <laughs> well, Medicare's gonna pay for that. No, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah. Um, and, or they assume that their mom and dad had a plan. Right. They're ready to call the insurance company. What number do we call? And there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. So I watched their financial life erode, burn up. Add to that, right, the, the pain and family dynamic of the stress, it just added fuel to that already very bright burning fire and it was, it was horrible to watch, so I just had to, I had to make a shift. 
Okay, so did you have an aha moment when you were working in home health and hospice when you just felt compelled to make a shift? What was yeah, that? Yeah, I did. So I did a lot of education. I saw myself, I did not want to see myself around the table with families anymore. I wanted to help prevent this from happening. So while working in the home health industry, I started doing a lot of community education on Medicare, long term care, aging in place things that just people don't think about until they're either experiencing it or it's happened to a loved one. But unfortunately, when I would talk to the people that came, oftentimes they had either just lost a loved one or something like this had just happened to them and or they were currently in the situation. It's not a topic that, you know, we really want to no, it's not talk fun. about. It's not fun. <laughs> right. So um, I realized the audience that I was attracting at that point was not going to be the audience where preventing these fires was going to occur. And that's when I just through prayer and discernment and through discussions with people in the industry landed on Medicare because at least at 65 people have to start talking about Medicare. Right. And then I can use that platform to to walk through these stories that otherwise were just sitting in my head, right? It's sitting in my life experience. But I could help navigate people and let them know what to expect. And then organically, you know, it led to everything One thing else. Leads to the yeah. That's amazing. In your current practice, how do you keep the mission of preventing fires going? Education. Education, yes. education, education. <laughs> so even now, you know, Chantel and I spend a lot of time educating our communities where we serve. Mm -hmm. um, we do retirement seminars. Recently, I was asked to speak at the Michelin North American headquarters, and the topic was cracking the long-term care cove, cove, not a cove, code, code for the sandwich generation. Because we, a lot of us, have children that we're still caring for, but we also have aging parents or other loved ones. But guess what, guys? We're also trying to keep working so our retirement isn't impacted. So how do you balance all that, right? Well, and we're so empathetic when we're sitting around at kitchen tables, litter rooms, because we, as women in our households, sit in that same seat. Yeah. So we understand what that feels Absolutely. like. Absolutely. I'm dealing with um, my family right now with, with that situation. And it's important for us to be empowered and to know what's out there, what's available, and what these resources are before an event just happens to us. Yeah. So yeah, so I, we still do a lot of education. And the reason why is statistics do not lie. 70% mm -hmm. of people who reach the age of 65 are going to need some type of long-term care. And as the number of people aging over 65, that's just gonna continue to increase that number. But I want everyone to shift for a second. Don't think of long-term care as I'm laying in a bed and I can't do anything for myself. That is not what long-term care is. I have clients that have Parkinson's and they have trouble walking, right? So that's a, they, they can walk, it's just difficult. They shuffle their feet. That's transferring, that's one activity of daily living. Maybe it's difficult for them to get dressed. So they have help. So they have amazing quality of life because they're able to get the help they need. So people are living longer with the right type of care because they had a plan. Yes, makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, listen to these statistics. So that's a big one. But we protect ourselves from fire in our house, right? Most of us have a homeowner's insurance policy. Mm -hmm. The chance of someone having a loss in a home environment is one in 1,200. That would equal about a $100,000 loss. The chance of getting in a car accident where you would have a $100,000 loss is one in 240. The chance of somebody getting a, having a major medical event is one in 15, but the chance of someone needing long-term care is one in five. So look around the tables, that's yeah. two of you probably, mm -hmm. at each of these tables. It doesn't have to be though a bad experience, it's just living the best life you can with the right kind of help. So and not letting dad say, just take me out back. Yeah. No. No, I know. We hear that a lot. Well, <laughs> if I get to that point, just take me out back. Yeah. No. That's what they hear. No. But I'll, let me tell you, the, the biggest statistic for us, too, as women, because we often are the ones in families that families lean into, mm -hmm. is to, for caregivers, just get, this blows my mind, um, 10 million Americans 
are, that are 50 and older are caring for loved ones. Those people are losing out on three trillion, trillion dollars of wages, pensions, retirement funds, and other benefits. That is not, so not only protecting your own retirement from a long-term care crisis, but protect your family right. from, from theirs. Let your daughters continue to be your daughter, yes. right? That's Let your son be your son and your wife be your wife, not have to be your nurse. Yes. Unless so that's true. what they do for a living. <laughs> okay, so tell us about breaking out on your own and how the name Clarity came to be. Yes. So Clarity Financial Solutions Retirement Made Clear is our little slogan. <laughs> and we, as I mentioned, do a lot of education, 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 education. And often when we're talking to clients, we use that word, clarity. We want to bring clarity to your retirement. We want to bring yes. clarity to your Medicare plan. So it just made sense. And, um, and then we also landed on a diamond for the submark, not because they're expensive and glamorous, mm. but because they're unique. They're one of a kind, and they are incredibly powerful and strong under pressure. And I feel that if you can talk to people and prepare them for these events before they happen, they know that their unique retirement, their one of a kind retirement, is going to withstand those pressures. Not to mention they all have so many facets and families are just very unique and everyone's retirement is unique. So that's, but we would never have been able to do it without, no. <laughs> Les, without Leslie from Financial Independence Group <laughs> and, and obviously Jessica and the amazing team here yes. at Women's Wealth Boutique. Okay, so women in financial services, I know it's very important to you. As we have a team of five, we're missing one. There's four here. <laughs> um, women here at Clarity, um, you, we have, you have partnered with Women's Wealth Boutique as your registered investment advisory. So tell us about the decision and why you feel it's so important. So in a, a recent statistic that I read, the closest one I could find in 2022, it only said 27.7% of financial advisors were women. And that's just way too low. Um, why? We come to situations with a different bend. We listen. We nurture. We're not afraid of our emotions or our passion, Camille, as you were saying. We're not afraid of that. We lean into it. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But I just feel like we have a different bend in the conversation. We also know what it's like to be called on as a caregiver or just a planning process. And it's not a matter of, you know, just accumulation or a, you know, rate of return. It's a, it's a, it's a relationship and we're just really good at that. Yeah. So I want more women to do that. <laughs> okay, so lastly, tell us what differentiates Clarity and exactly how folks might be watching can reach out to sure. us. So at Clarity, we focus on retirement made clear. So we don't really focus on in the accumulation phase. We are very specific to the distribution phase. So when you are earning money and accumulating, it's just a very different feel than when you're starting to draw off of that money. So understanding Medicare, understanding long-term care, understanding required minimum distribution strategy, Strategies. not that it's just gonna happen to you, but which accounts are we gonna do for that, right? So I feel like that that is, and, and also just the education. We want our clients not just to know what's happening, but why. So I, as if you want to, we actually have a QR code. I forgot about this, by the way, when I was doing my talk. But we had some interesting some things here. This is what we normally see when we meet um, a client. They're stressed, they're around a table, right? And we don't like that. We like to bring them peace of mind. This is one of the things that I was telling you about, the caregivers. And caregiver syndrome is an actual real diagnostic code. People that are caregivers oftentimes spend, they get sick themselves, right? We're not taking care of ourselves. But he, uh oh, yeah, I think that's that. There so this go. is the QR code. <laughs> um, if you want to scan that, I am happy to. If you put your email address in, we have a really good tool for tips and suggestions on getting that long-term care conversation started with your family, with your friends, um, even if you have no ability or you don't think you can afford a plan. A plan sometimes is just discussing it. Mm -hmm. 
So just having the good words to be able to some tips about bringing up a hard, yes. hard topic. Starting the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chantel. You're welcome. Good job. Yeah. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. <laughs>